Well, joining me on the news at this time to, of course, uh, shed more light on this is Dr. Ambrose Igboke, a public affairs analyst. Thank you for joining me on the news. Let's start off with this. Uh, hundreds of participants in a Malian, of course, national dialogue actually did recommend that uh, military rulers who took power as of 2020 keep power for several more years. Now, what does this reflect of Mali's political space? Uh, I, 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 I was on your platform and uh, many other uh, television channels when the coup that was shaping uh, Niger, Burkina Faso, and the euphoria that followed it. I told, you, I told you specifically that I was not enthusiastic about it because all the, the history of military coups in Africa have shown that the military guys just come, mouth all kinds of revolutionary promises, and at the end of the day, they become worse than the civilians that they're, they're trying to correct. Um, I said there was no way that the military guys were better. This is a typical example of my position and my assertion about this matter. These guys came in uh, as revolutionaries and said they want to change things in Mali. And uh, that, I mean, this was like the, the fourth coup, uh, the fourth coup, or the eighth coup in four years or so. And um, you know, it, it it's becoming worrisome that those people who said that we're going to change things for better for Africans are now digging in. And that has been a pattern from the likes of Muhammad Gaddafi, from the likes of uh, Pobia, from the likes of Robert Mugabe. Uh, it, it, the list is endless. The, the, the people that transmute themselves from the from the military uh, to, to, to civilian. And we have seen that a lot in Africa. We're always, we're always digging. They do this kind of thing Mali is doing, add more years to themselves. The next thing, they will constitute a kangaroo conference, and then they will change the constitution, and at the end of the day, they will make themselves life president. And so that is the pattern, and they are just following the trajectory of history of military coups and the self-perpetuation of power in Africa. And this too has shown clearly that even the wave of military coups that are happening in other African countries, we follow this pattern. I mean, they, they also uh, are suggesting that uh, when elections uh, are eventually held, the junta chief, talking about Colonel Asimi Oita, should be the candidate for the presidency. What do you think this is? That, that is, even when, when we took out the history of the Liberian Civil War, uh, one of the agreements that was reached was that the warlords, uh, the, the contending warlords will not be will not contest for presidency, and, uh, and uh, surprisingly, uh, it, it was not obeyed. Uh, people like Chastella went in and, and contested for the, the, the presidency, and so this is also what is happening here. Uh, a transition of this nature was not is not supposed to have the actors of the coup of the military coup to be uh, to be involved, but now it's just an arrangement to perpetuate themselves in power in the guise of a democratically. Uh, uh, elected process, which is wrong. Uh, so, uh, you just removing the toga of the military uniform and they're putting on uh, a, a civilian regalia. That does not change the substance of the person or the essence of the person. It's the same with military mentality. Uh, they, they, he's, they, are, they are not uh, structured for democracy, and that is what has happened. And um, this, this, as I said earlier, uh, this has been the, the, the pattern. And this transformation of uh, military guys into civilians, it's the same thing. Uh, in our own time in Nigeria here, we remember what happened between 1993 to uh, uh, 1998, where, you know, uh, Major General Sanapacha tried to transmute himself to, you know, having five political parties and all those kind of things and trying to make all of them nominate him as, the, uh, as a, uh, a flag bearer. That, so we have seen the script so many times. It's an old fashioned script. Uh, and it's still, I'm surprised that 50 years, 60 years, 40 years, 30 years down the line, that is still being practiced by, uh, by, by the young folks that are coming up in, in, in the military uh, status in Africa. As these are things that have been practiced from the 60s, 70s, mm. 80s, 90s, and even recently. And we are back to it again. Almost uh, 60 something years after most of us got independence. It's a pity that Africa is still in this trajectory. Now, how would you say is significant is the role of uh, international system in all of this? We've seen countries and, of course, international organizations, you know, impose sanctions and all of that. Any effect uh, so far? Uh, these sanctions are infinitesimal most of the time. They are not very strong sanctions because most of the time the West is involved uh, in, in um, exploiting the mineral resources. So whoever is empowered, most of the time they don't take care 
uh, what occurs is economic exploitation and prosperity. Uh, so, uh, if you don't, ban, uh, you know, if you don't pander to their whims and caprices, they start giving you sanctions and the rest. If you pander to their whims, then they leave you alone and pretend as if you don't, uh, as if you are not there. So, um, it is not the West that will tell us how to run Africa, democracy, and the rest. They just mouth these things because the real deal is about uh, access to your economy. And so, if a military man has access to come, they don't have a problem well with that. Uh, other third world countries have started to uh, start to you know liberate themselves. I think we are the Africans are the ones holding themselves down. They should stop uh, pointing fingers uh, to the uh, at the West because um, the West also colonized India. The West colonized uh, Singapore. The West colonized Malaysia. All these other countries. The West also kind of colonized us. Uh, you know, Southern Africa. We can see Brazil emerging. We can see uh, Argentina also trying their best over even Venezuela that is beleaguered. We can see that they are trying also to uh, come out. Cuba that has been in the, in the back end for a while. So other countries are trying to emerge. And uh, people we are competitors with that we have power with Nigeria, like Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Taiwan, and the rest. They have already, you know, uh, they have already left the station and they are, you know, they are, they are elevating higher. So we are All still. Right. Here, still trying to uh, look up to Britain and America to tell us what to do and not what to do, giving us uh, uh, economic blueprints. And that is All the right. problem we have been having. Uh, right. So, uh, these guys will not save Africa. It's Africa that will save Africa. So, it is time to say if there is coup and those people are trying to transmit themselves, that African countries should not give them that opportunity so that coups can stop in Africa. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your time on the news. Uh, Dr. Ambrose Igboke, public affairs analyst, once again, thank you. Thank you for having me.